Hello folks and welcome to Air Earth Chronicles. We are in the development experimental uh, branch of an update that you will be getting uh, as early as uh, tomorrow. And uh, today we will be previewing uh, the new content uh, drop. So for starters, we have an entirely new organization called the Vortex. The Vortex is a secret cabal formed by the science of the three major noble houses during the War of Roverford. Both then and now their goal is to undermine the king and become the controlling power behind the throne. So by playing Vortex you are playing uh, by definition one of the three heirs to the major noble houses. So you are a noble, you have a bonus skill of nobility plus one. And uh, once uh, you pick uh, Vortex, you have to pick which house of the three you belong. And um, the house Nargath uh, gives bonus to Conjuration, house Ador bonus to Seduction, and house Jethal bonus to Telepathy. Uh, there is the standard uh, Vortex perks, which uh, focus on controlling, destroying, befriending, Grid and also things like uh, control can affect enemies plus one level higher. So, uh, by default, control can affect enemies that are up to two levels higher than you. Uh, with it, it will be up to three. And there are more perks like this. So, eventually, you can control higher level characters, making control a more sustainable tactic. On the downside, and uh, Vortex uh, also increases the summon limit in uh, their perks. So on the downside, fatigue comes faster when you are playing with a Vortex character. And uh, the more you go up in the ranks, your summon limit will increase uh, further. And also you will be able to control higher level enemies. There are also the typical uh, contacts, we'll see them in a bit after we are previewing their card set and uh, some of them are uh, unique to its house so Lady Amelia can only be acquired through the house of Jethal Lord Novak house of Edo and Lord Tarek house of Nargath uh, you will also get to choose depending on your house gain access to secrets from this organization so Nargath uh, secrets can only uh, be picked if you have a House of Nargath character. And uh, the other days we look and you can see here that these uh, Nargath perks boost conjuration and your summons. Fatigue comes even faster, your summon limit increases and uh, because you won't be able to play too many cards uh, per turn, also, your sloth effect uh, becomes stronger and maybe you can just get rid of the cards you can't play to deal some extra damage. Uh, then Ador focus on boosting seduction actions, by which uh, vulnerable weaken, reducing enemy resistances to bewitch, ripple effects about bewitch and vulnerable. And uh, finally, Jethal focus on telepathy and will give you the higher, the highest possible control uh, benefit. And uh, they have perks that will further help you control uh, the enemies. Uh, they will play with stuns, bleeds, intense, reducing enemy resistances to stun, ripple effects about stun, and uh, so on as are the signature effects of the telepathy uh, school. Okay, so let's view the cards. Uh, you will also notice a sub-theme uh, that uh, involves about agent allies. For instance, uh, whenever an agent ally attacks this turn, you will be getting farthings and apply weaken. Uh, you will be able to give new abilities to your agents depending on your house and uh, have other uh, effects that will trigger 
when an agent ally does something or when you play an agent ally and so on and so forth. And aside to the enemies that you make your agents, you also have some from your own house, for example, Jethal uh, Retainer is an agent and uh, it's only available to the Jethal household through the perk Jethal Secrets and uh, so is the Nargath Retainer is also an agent and the Ador Retainer You will notice uh, some cards like uh, the Dancer here that have uh, this effect, uh, the buff synergies added in this card affect two random enemies. Meaning that if you put a stun synergy in this card, then you will get to stun two random enemies. If you put a bleed, you will bleed two random enemies and uh, so on. Similar to how effects like this are structured, but all of these cards that affect random enemies are always uh, ignoring synergies, meaning you can't add your own synergies to them. Here you can, and uh, you can go wild. You can add two bewits, you can add uh, two bleeds, you can add bleed stun, and they will both affect two random enemies and so on. You will also notice that uh, Fracture plays a big role in the uh, guild's uh, repertoire, so you will be having uh, cards that uh, Fracture the enemy and allow you to apply more debuffs on them. Uh, Courtesan also has this, debuff synergies added in this card affect three random enemies and also Whenever you apply Bewitch this turn, you, you deal last 5 damage to all the enemies, but this damage doesn't break the Bewitch effect, the uh, counters you just added. Um, so these are the Vortex uh, set. At the end of it, uh, you also get a different knight based on uh, which of the 3 houses you belong to. And um, the next thing that we'll be seeing is uh, the new class of the Aristocrat. The Aristocrat is a noble class, again, similar to Knight, but uh, uh, unsuitable completely from com for combat. You are uh, having low health, you ha having uh, uh, low action points, you have a very big deck and you also have three summon limit. Uh, so you can uh, focus on your summons and uh, build on your summons. The skills are nobility, subterfuge and uh, seduction. And this is the general cards that each of uh, the three classes have. So you have the farm hunt, which is also a conscript. So he counts as a conscript, and you can upgrade him to the various companies uh, that uh, are part of uh, leadership. All of this uh, specialization can uh, learn uh, leadership actions. So we have. Personal Guard. Whenever you play a Guard Ally this turn, you gain Defend and also you get to craft a random Guard card, which you can then play to get this benefit, but also to do other stuff. Control Enemy plus 11 gains the type of Agent, morphs if you have Subterfuge to also inflict uh, Wicked. The bodyguard has stoned and defend before each enemy acts this turn. You get retribution, so uh, if they are taunted, for example, or if they don't have any evasion, they will get this damage. Mercenary. Whenever you apply vulnerable, you also amplify your slashing damage. And finally, the champion. This damage destroys an enemy 
and whenever an enemy leaves play these turns, your allies increase in power and all have more abilities that will unlock uh, probably right away from the class you are playing, but these are cards that any noble can access and if they don't have subterfuge then they won't get this bonus effect. Uh, but uh, the aristocrat will because that's what they are playing with mostly. And finally treasury. Whenever an agent ally attacks this turn you gain farthings. Uh, let's see the individual classes. Oh, before that let's go and have a look at the perks. So we have uh, court manners, court intrigue, politics, influence, similar to what the knights have. It's the same perks right here. And then we have the knighthood ceremony, which makes you count as a knight and give you bonus to leadership. You can already learn leadership as an aristocrat. This will also give you a bonus, will make you count as a knight. It won't give you knight's perks, but uh, whenever a card says if you are a knight then the card does this then it will does this because you will be a knight. As uh, a noble you have been knighted, but that doesn't mean that you can really fight. It's uh, none of these um, specializations particularly make up for good fighters. Uh, we have Aristocrats Grace, Control, Befriend, Loyalty, Affectation, Boost Your Shaman Limit, Non Challenge, Private Tutor, Higher Education, and some manor upgrades. You can upgrade your manor. So all of the nobles can have a decent kitchen, of course, can have their chambers and can have a treasury, some more than others. So, going uh, to the courtier, you regularly attend the royal court seeking to insinuate your way into a higher status and increase your house influence. We get nobility, seduction, and subterfuge. Can also learn leadership actions anyway, regardless if you take the perk or not of knighthood. Uh, nobility actions get plus one grid per two ranks and all actions get more venom. So let's have a look. Court Intrigue. It's a play one card between uh, vulnerable two to three random enemies, grid and glutony, or draw a card and have your agent allies get stronger. Court Affair. Whenever you apply vulnerable this turn, you get uh, minus one strain and restore to action points. Undermine. You pay 25 farthings whenever an ancient ally attacks this turn. Synergy grid and weaken. Fascinate. Vulnerable 3 and some extra morphs, which uh, you can see later on. And we have wild farm hunt. These are the standard. Aristocrats card, so let's see what fascinates us. Draw vulnerable and bewitch. If you have this and that's a courtier you do. So this is the card you get as a courtier. Uh, perks. You have hired muscle, you can get uh, these guys to, to join you. You are ruthless, subtle, exploit weakness can expand your kitchen further, you are a simmer, you can add the blacksmithery in your manor, opportunist, mastermind, you can expand your chambers, you can expand your treasury, you have shady connections, you can expand your armory and the trophy room and here needs a break. Okay. Um, that's the courtier. The magistrate. You hold the vital position of magistrate within the royal council and deal with the day-to-day -day legal matters. So you have nobility plus two, diplomacy plus one, can learn leadership, diplomacy actions, get vulnerable plus one every three ranks, and all the actions will weaken more. 
and you will see that some cards now have an aristocrat effect which uh, will work for your aristocrat character you have a sentence these drunken guards right here and uh, expedition in the perks you get a uh, wonder from the philosopher perspicuity finances novice Methodic Doubt from the Philosopher, Silver Tongue, Convincing Arguments. Uh, so that's how good philosopher you can become. And uh, finally, Finance is Expert, Master, Magistrate's Wisdom, Court Advisor, and uh, King's Advisor. The Lynch is uh, like a commander but uh, focusing more on the commanding aspect because they can't really fight they don't get benefits on their valor like the commander does for example have this amazing effect that as a leads you don't have but as a leads what you have is an extra sum on limits so uh, the knight has 2 plus 1, you have 3 plus 1, so you start with 4 allies, but fatigue will come faster. Both your leadership and nobility actions will get stronger. And uh, you also have the oath bound knights that uh, will go become even stronger once you have a leadership of uh, five. So inspiration, reinforcements, new orders, sword infantry, the oath-bound knights, and uh, the standard aristocrat cards. Uh, and your perks gives you the options to expand more military aspects of your base similar to what the commander gets but uh, unlike the commander you can only reach up to the strategist rank also unlike the commander you have access to more buildings that only the marshal have from the night uh, uh, tree so i do hope that uh, both the aristocrat and the knight, despite they lean on uh, nobility, will both play uh, very differently, one from another. And uh, vortex would be make more sense to be combined with a class like an aristocrat, because, uh, let's face it, you are said you are plotting to undermine the king, rather than a virtuous character like most knights are okay so uh, what else we have if you go to player's handbook you will now see that the card count has up to 4099 cards so there are pretty much more cards but the player's handbook is also much faster uh, to work so if you clicked combat you would be waiting for all eternity for the set to load but right now the set has loaded already uh, almost instantly considering uh, the size so you don't have to wait anymore for the cards to load they load almost instantaneously uh, if you have the ancient ruins expansion there are also some extra cards added to it and these are some uh, legendary contacts which i have classified as uh, exalted for easier search so, so is these guys right here and uh, you can find them by exploring certain places only so for example iago uh, will drop if you explore Alburg. If you do a quest in Alburg, 
that supports dropping legendary characters you may find Iago there. Uh, similar to Baros Bay. If you do a quest there that can drop legendary cards, then you may find Count Marcus von Baro there. So these guys are extremely, extremely powerful, but also extremely, extremely rare to get. And uh, there are other cards like uh, new equipment, there are new weapons, some uh, new legendary items, and I will let you explore and uh, see what all this uh, stuff are. Overall, I hope you enjoy the next update. That's all I wanted to talk about now. Uh, have a good night and I will be seeing you soon. Bye-bye.